I think ideally, uh, 20 years from now, the best practices that we have from the East, practices of mindfulness, practices of focus, practices of compassion, they would be fully integrated into our daily lives. They would be taught at schools and, and used uh, with kids so that they can sort of be their best selves in the school environment and learn more. Um, that in the workplace, we would have opportunities to practice these skills. Um, and that people would consider these real strengths, you know, whether you're going to medical school or law school or business school, that you would learn how to cultivate these particular qualities of mindfulness and compassion as key human strengths that will help all of us do better uh, and connect more. And there's so much research going on now that is really uh, encouraging in this way and, and lots of programs that are being created that, to do that. I think there's another possibility that we'll get so excited about what we're learning about how these practices change the brain that you know, given how uh, addicted our society is to technology or looking for the next pill, uh, I think it's very possible that we might see instead a kind of scientific or medical attempt to find a shortcut. So maybe we don't have to meditate. Can we just go in and, and use some sort of deep stimulation to make your brain do this thing that, that we've seen maybe takes years to cultivate through meditation practice? So I think it'll be very interesting to see where we go, whether we keep the, the older traditional practices or whether we find some kind of technology. And if we do, whether those shortcuts will work. Support Ontario's public television. Donate at tvo.org.